So here we have the final stage of uh, building the bank of carburetors, which is to bench synchronize them. Just want to show you a couple of things on the carbs. Um, on here, you'll notice that each of the bodies have got the stamps on them, a number of dots. So that's the number three carbs, got three dots, and so is the cap. And here, number two, and no surprise, surprise, this one here will have number one. Very useful for matching the caps to the bodies, but also um, I did show you how you could find out which carb was which, but if you've got them actually stamped, you can easily check to see which ones are which and to make sure they go in the right order. Um, so we've rebuilt them, everything is tightened up and buttoned up. Um, I just want to do a couple of checks to show you. Um, the first is to check that the um, linkage between the choke the throttle link and the fast idle adjustment arm is not it, it's about a millimeter and you can just see in here where we have a i'm going to try and get that light out there you can see where the, th the there we go that's better you can see this gap here um you're just making sure that that is small enough to make sure that you've got your idle screw that will touch against that arm and then underneath there you have throttle linkage and the choke linkage and you just want to make sure that you've got a gap in there here and so that when I operate the choke it will push down on that and you can see there's a small gap and you can, that movement there has to be um, it's, it's got to be less than a millimeter I think the specification calls for 0.7 to 1 and I'm happy with that there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to check that the diaphragm pump um, arm has got a suitable space. And you can see on here we have, if I get the light sorted again there, here's a diaphragm pump plunger, and here's the operating arm. And I just want to make sure that that gap there is functioning correctly. Yeah, you can see there's a very, very small gap there. That gap it should really be, a, um, it's, it's 0 0.04 of a millimeter, and it can work where there is zero gap at all. If there is too big a gap between here and here, you need to bend that arm upwards. Let's see if I can get, if I've got that right there. Yeah, so the, that arm there. Yeah, so that arm, the, the gap is between that, that arm and that plunger, and if there is a, a gap that is bigger than 0 0.04 of a millimeter, you need to bend that arm upwards. Um, I'm happy with the layout that we have at the moment. And so what I'll do now is I'll show Okay, so we're now going to try and bench sync these carbs. Now, you can see from the throttles themselves that that butterfly is completely closed and there's a small gap there. And there's a gap in number three and a, quite a big one in number four. So what we need to do is we need to, if you read the manuals, it tries to tell you to measure the gap or get equal gaps between the bypass hole and the uh, the butterfly valve itself. Um, what I prefer to do is I prefer to use something that will allow the distance of these valves to be all of the same height. Now you can use um, two screwdrivers that are exactly the same or you can use welding rods or you can use some cables that uh, we use in the garden for hanging wires or you can use drills and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two two drills they're, they're basically this is, these are just four mil drills that I've got and it, they're just it's just important to have something that is in metal um, that won't deform and are exactly the same diameter um, the way you, you bench sync the carbs is you always start with the number two carb which is the main one with the main throttle linkage on and that is always going to be closed. Well, it's not always going to be closed, but you adjust all the, the screws until that one is closed, and then you adjust the other ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with number one. I'll quickly show you how to do this. So I've got the throttle linkages, and you can see here as I, as I do this, the throttle linkage is open. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the throttle, into the body of the throttle, and allow the valve to close in it. And so therefore I know that that is four millimeters open and I'm going to put the drill in this side and you can see on this side it is very loose and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to gradually I'll try and do this so you can see it I'm going to change 
turn this screw here until such time as that throttle valve will be slightly lower to the point where it will be just start catching there. So if I take another half a turn, that's uh, stuck. So I put it a, a half a turn the other way. It's just tight there. So I do it a quarter turn. That's perfect. So that is now set. Those two are now set. I'll then move across to these babies here. Now these are to be done in this order. This linkage here feeds onto this first arm and then this then feeds onto the next one. So don't do this one first because you have to do this one and the, the, the final car of number four comes off number three. So again, I'm going to do exactly the same. Well, I've still got that in there and oh, it's a huge space there. Make sure that you don't damage any of the jets when you're pushing these parts in. Um, so what I would recommend you do is just to make sure that you don't put them too far in is don't use something that is sharp or is likely to damage any of the jets. So that's why I use the blunt end. Don't use the sharp end because that's just going to cause you trouble. Again, if you have lots of space in there. It's just a bit tight now so I can then tighten it up. You'll notice that I'm not putting it in and winding the valve down onto it because that is likely to damage the bottom of the valve. You see, so it's relatively tight, so I'll back that out a bit, a little bit like that. Perfect, I'm quite happy with that now. And so now we can go on to the final one. You can see there's lots of space in there, so I've got to wind that right the way down. So I'm now happy that those are roughly correct. You can see in each of these, they look so much better. What I'm going to do again is I'm now going to put it on, put this into number one. So I put the drill into number one. I'm just going to check to see how well all of the others go. And that just feels just right. I'm going to do the same here where I'll do the same in number four. Very happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten up these the lock nuts, making sure that the screw itself does not move. And I believe this is an eight mil lock nut. I'll do it just a bit quickly like this. have it and so that is how you bench sink a set of carburetors.